can hear this. Yeah. 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 Thanks so much, guys, for um, letting me come on this uh, this call. Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, really passionate about um, sharing Christ with people, and you know, I feel like I'm out of practice because it's you know busyness of life and kids and everything, and just haven't really just even been out of my my small circle. So it's something that I've been really challenged to do and to get back into. So, you know, um, it's been great even just being at work and just forming friendships at work. Uh, recently, I was also invited to a business um, breakfast and it was put on for, for Christian business people um, with a vision of making an impact in the workplace. So it was, um, the guy that um, headed it up, um, he's, he's a very successful business guy himself um, and has sold his business for, I think, $30 million to one of the packer businesses um but he's retired now he's in his 70s but he's he's him and his wife are passionate about sharing jesus as well through their ministry so they've created a ministry called f4t which uh, stands for food for thought and the idea of it is to run a business um mentoring or not really mentoring but kind of like a business uh initiative that appeals to business people um, but actually it's centered around Christ values and, and the goal of it is to eventually to to invite people to partake in the Alpha course as well. Um, it's a modified Alpha course which challenges them um, and and takes them through discussion um, around, you know, Christian topics as well. So mm -hmm. it's, um, yeah, it's, it's good to meet up with them for breakfast and see what they've, hear what they've been doing in the business world. Um, and obviously they were encouraging us to be able to set up something similar in our workplace as well um so that's one thing that i'm considering um but as daddy mentioned i've got five kids uh quite young and i'm, I'm mindful of time as well and it's difficult to even carve out time to mm. to do certain things so just trying to work that out and and what's the best way to to make an impact with the with the available time that we we have on, a, on our hands so that's something that you know obviously prayerful about and just um wanting to, um, you know, make an impact and make a difference in this world for Jesus. That's uh, that's always been at the heart of everything. But um, how that outworks obviously changes depending on what stage of life that you're at, um, you know. And uh, and so I think that's that's really key. Um, and, yeah, like, like my wife's great as well. She's managed to, to make time to be able to connect with people, obviously with kids in hand, uh, in tow, and, and being able to... Um, just invite you know meet people in random places and invite them along to uh to connect um and i think she's keen to even invite some people along to our some of our christian gatherings as well soon as well so that's um that's a great that's a great way to do it just sim as simple as making making friends with people mm -hmm. wherever wherever that may be and then just inviting them along to mm -hmm. um to encounter christ or even just to meet other christians so that, I mean, to me, one of the things I'd share is obviously looking back into the uni days when we were in university, they were mm -hmm. kind of like our golden days. So I think we saw so many salvations during those years. There would have been hundreds and hundreds of salvations. Um, and that was just from merely just having a lot of fun, um, running events, playing sport, playing basketball, doing rock climbing, hanging out at university. Um, obviously, you've got a bit more time back then as well without kids and family. But mm. essentially, just connecting over, you know, random things, um, fun things, even even at nightclubs, um, and just having conversations with people, and people just being intentional about that, bringing that into a public sphere wherever there's influence. Um, Deb's um, husband ha was the president of one of the Chinese clubs at the university, so he was able to bring an inf a Christian influence at that high level. And same with one of my other friends was also the the, um, the ex president. So you know we had opportunities to be able to impact people and, and a, a platform, um, mm. followed by followed up by just circles of friends being able to include people, um, a mix of Christians and non Christians. And I think essentially when I think about any effective evangelism, that's kind of it. It's it's nearly like a herd mentality. If you get a if you get a quorum or uh, a majority of numbers of people who are Christian, who are intentional about their Christianity um, and sharing the gospel. And then you get a few 
non-Christians in that environment, it's going to be infectious mm. and it's going to be contagious and there's going to be God conversations and people being, um, you know, mm. invited to consider Christ um, and maybe attend different Christian events, which also will further stimulate them to think about, obviously, what Christ means and the meaning of life. So I think, I think essentially evangelism isn't really that mystified. Like it should be just pretty simple, like just just being friendly, connecting with people, getting to know them, and then just inviting them to whatever, you know, um, either a social gathering or a home group or a church or other type of, you know, alpha or some sort of thing that is going to challenge them to, to think deeper than where they're at, you know, at the present time. So, you know, so I think we're all, I'm passionate about that. I want to see that be able to happen in this day and age because obviously things have changed so much in the world um, with COVID and everything else that um, is happening in the world at the moment. And I think it's a great opportunity because a lot of people are uncertain. A lot of people are questioning things and a lot of people have lost hope as well. Um, mm. So it's a great opportunity to um, present the, the case of Christ and the hope in, that we have in Christ to, to the to the world that we live in um so i think that's um that's a great it's a great opportunity that we have you know in front of us and i've got mm-hmm. another friend who's uh, been doing friday nights at town hall steps just hardcore old school evangelism street style and they're seeing hundreds of people hundreds of salvations every friday night they do it worship and open air preaching and just talking to people praying for people in the streets just asking them hey you know can we pray for you? Is there anything that we can pray for you? And, and obviously I've, I've been involved in that at university. It's really effective. Just just straight up, straight up. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm a Christian. My name's Simon. I'd like to, we're just praying for people today. Can I pray with you? Is there anything I can pray for? It's just a straight up, you know, real, mm-hmm. real, uh, people just are blown away by that, just that people would care and want to pray. And most people say, yes, I'd love for you to, for you to pray for me. And you know, great great opportunity to to introduce Christ um, to that person. So yeah, so um, that's that's my thoughts there. I don't know if I'm quite on topic because I joined quite late in the conversation, but um, yeah, that's that's my thoughts there, and definitely really passionate about that. The other thing that I would say as well is um, kids kids ministry. Um, obviously, myself got five young kids, and thinking about obviously when I was young um, in in school. I can remember the most impactful things in my life that that shaped who I am as a Christian and gave me a strong faith in God. I would I would put it down to camps. Uh, uh, one of the top highlighting powerful mm. things events that can change, you know, someone's life. Um, it's it's something that's it's an environment that's and I would add to that maybe even holidays because even just going away on a ski trip can mm. can be life changing. Um, and it's not just the it's not just the activity, but it's the fact that you're away out of your comfort zone, um, mm. surrounded by people that if you're in a Christian, predominantly Christian group again, that, that rule of numbers, um, and you end up, you know, having a DNM at night, deep and meaningful conversations, um, that's the key. Mm. And that's going to that's gonna challenge and just bring people to the point where they can share about what's deep, deeply inside mm. of them. And again, you know, that was another thing that, I did a lot of when I was younger, um, which I'm challenged to actually re- revisit that. So we had we had an old group of friends that we used to hang out with in from university days called the Old Gang, um, and so we used to do a lot of holidays together. This that even um, Adrian was kind of in that group as well. So, um, but yeah, I just wanted to. I've, I've been trying to re rekindle and reconnect with some of those guys as well because some of them have been away from church and would love to reconnect with them and refire them as well. Um, and just be able to just talk, you know, heart to heart with people again, because it's been many, many years and just seeing touching base to see where people are at. And I think that's, um, that's something that is encouraging for people as well to know that, you know, people still care about them. So just, you know, catching up with people and yeah, just, just, um, yeah, just challenging them and maybe, you know, having some time to share and the time to pray together is really powerful. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to see that in, in the midst of, everything that we're doing as well and um, to see what God will do, what the Holy Spirit will do once we, um, when we gather in his name and just um, invite his Holy Spirit to, um, to minister. Um, I, I think we can touch on it in, when we get to that third circle. Something I've been thinking a lot about is 
I guess, the way church do make, build, make a disciple in this current day and age, which, which I think is, um, you know, preached from the pulpit, then given a pathway of some initiatives. You know, for example, men go and do a men's thing and then do some sort of social activity, then bring them into the church, come, come into the church and we'll do Alpha or we'll do a, uh, you know, evangelistic series or da 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 those pathways. And I've been thinking about, you know, the importance of in some ways, right, because I, 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 I think I, I share a little bit of Simon's boldness but not as bold. And I, and I think I get what Simon's doing. I love that those moments and I, and I think we're, but like you're particularly gifted and built for its side to be so so comfortable with it that people don't actually feel so intimidated mm. to others they'd be like that is crazy like town hall are you serious my gosh you know and um and and then again um then again that's that's not to say don't do that but there's so much to be said for i i think what does it mean like say a church said, let's spend one year doing what we're going to call pre-evangelism, which just means this, go out, get to know some people and love them. Like I don't, you don't even need to do the Jesus thing with them yet. Um, and I'm just playing with this balance of thought because I I, I, I'm, I know that the account to that is you never mentioned Jesus. Well, what are you doing? Like, do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm aware of that as for myself. Um, but I, because I know that I'm someone who's not that afraid of it, I could go mention Jesus on the second conversation. But I, I'm trying to say, Holy Spirit, God, what is it that we should be doing in this day and age? And I think it's his balance. I don't think there's a rule. I don't. But I think we we got to start um, shining light on this whole pre-evangelism thing, which to me is like, man, I just saw this guy and I'm just loving this person and I'm just getting to know who the, know them. I know their life. I know their situation. I know their their kids, I know this and that. And I don't have to get to point if we call some part on that continuum the, the the presentation, man, it's all right. Like but if I if I you know, is that is that, is that honesty with God? Like I, I honestly want to God. If you give me that chance now, I will. And I, if I don't, it's not because I'm scared, but it's because I'm I'm genuinely this is the moment where we're in, which is not to talk about it or talk about it. So so just to give real lots of permission to that space and time and even as i say that to you i was with my mum today for example and i'm earnestly trying to always trying to make sure she's saved you know um because it's in my heart like you're so frail um anything can happen and so it's yeah it's this this balance that i would love for us to explore together what does how do you go about witnessing how do you see it do you in some ways not value those little moments that just the conversations of getting to know someone is that okay um or do you kind of think, yeah, that's cool, Danny. Let me know when you get to the point where you actually share Jesus because I want to hear that part of the testimony. Do you know what I mean? Um, but what about if you were to say, hey, Danny, I, I hear that you've got a friend called Brendan. How are you going with him? And I said, oh, man, we went fishing. And, and you're just equally interested in that for me and going, man, good on you, mate. You keep loving him and you just be you be Jesus to that man. And um, and I go, yeah, my mate Brendan, share, he's, he's suffering with um, mental disorder, illnesses at the moment. So, guys, let's pray for him. And, and he doesn't even know we're praying for him. You know what I mean? But I'm on this journey to to love and show Jesus mm -hmm. to him. And when the moment comes, wow, I really hope I'm there. Or saying yes and amen. And, um, yeah, and I said thanks, guys, so much. It's always always so rich and amazing to hear from each of us. And um, thanks for the time, guys. And we're on the Thursdays, yep, 5 p.m. until for three more weeks before, oh, my gosh, Christmas is coming. So, um, thanks, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.